everybody. Welcome to Corn in the Morning. Uh, I know it's not the morning, or maybe it is the morning. Uh, who knows when this will get released. Today I want to share some general Star Wars CCG advice. Sometimes we players get bogged down looking for tricks to win a bad matchup, but we don't even have the fundamentals to win games in good matchups. So here's a few nuggets of advice that I feel like have taken me from being a bad player to being a slightly below average player. Um, so one thing, the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of these nuggets of advice was when you make, when you go to make a decision, you ask yourself, what is the worst that could happen? Classic piece of advice from, from Chris Goglin. Yeah. You know, if you got a dude with a lightsaber ready to fight, one of the worst things would be would if his lightsaber got stolen by weapon levitation. So, you know, you're in that situation. That's why maybe you want to pull the shield to prevent this. Uh, but on top of that, I feel like you also want to ask how likely is the worst case scenario and what's the opportunity cost? Um, going back to our weapon levitation example, did you see a weapon levitation on a verify? Are they playing a, a deck that you recognize as, as having played this card? Is there some other reason uh, that, that you feel like they're probably playing weapon levitation? Uh, you know, maybe that, that pushes you to pull the shield. On the other hand, are you playing against a deck where you've already got your three shields out and, uh, you're not sure what, what might be coming, you know, then maybe you want to hold off. Um, along with that, take advantage of deck verifies, you know, look at, look at cards like weapon levitation, sense, alter, any cards that might be shielded, uh, and consider the number of characters you see in average destiny. Uh, this could factor into combat math, a Lord Maul with lightsaber that will probably draw two sevens and hit your Jedi is very different from one who can't hit the broad side of a barn. And then trading characters is more valuable if your opponent has uh, 12 characters in their deck than if they have 25 or 30. Next up, keep your hand size up. Uh, this Card advantage in Star Wars CCG builds on itself. Not only does maintaining a large hand help bluff your opponent, it also helps with other resource management. If you don't deploy a character, then you have a bunch of force left over for things like drawing cards or uh, or saving force for your opponent's turn or just, just saving to be able to, to really come down hard on your next turn. Um, and if you devote resources uh, to making sure you get your activation out early in the game so that you can have that big hand size throughout those resources just just keep just keep paying off and paying off another big one here and this is really what this what this episode is all about have a plan a you know adapting to matchups is important but even the first time you play a deck you really should know your pull chains know your win condition and generally know how the deck is supposed to play. This is especially important with net decks. Don't be afraid to reach out to the people you're stealing the deck from. You know, ask them whether to deploy systems or whether to deploy two two sites. You know, you know maybe watch some replays or something. Um, if it's not a net deck, then have a mission statement. Have a reason you think your deck is better than existing net decks, even if you're wrong. You know. Everybody knows that I build decks that are, you know, that are bad. Uh, but I usually have some reason that I'm giving it a try. Now we've got the old, then we've got the old, who's the beat down? Should you be the first one to deploy to your sites or should you be reacting to your opponent? At what point do you kind of change things up? A good example of this is uh, the mains versus mains matchup. My There Is Good In Him deck will often start out fighting over one battleground and lose. At this point, my deck is no longer the beatdown. I abandon the first battleground and set up at the battle planes. My opponent likely can't afford to just eat the two force per turn there, so they end up needing to, to take the role of the beatdown to, to come after me. Um, this will often end up in my favor because I'm putting all my resources into that one site, well, at least some of their characters have to still defend the first battleground. Uh, you know, you have persona costs and everything else. Along with knowing who's the beatdown, keep in mind who's ahead. Every so often, it's good to consider if nobody deployed any cards for the rest of the game, who would win? 
some sometimes this the answer to this question tells you who needs to be the beatdown. Um, I originally got the advice from uh, from Eric Hunter, great great player. Um, next up, play your shields. Um, you get four shield pulls per game, uh, and sometimes sometimes more than that. Uh, there's not really a lot of shield busting strategies out there. Um, and there's no bonuses for ending the game with shield pulls available. So just use all your shield pulls. Use, you know, use your resources that you have available. That's what so much of Star Wars cards is about utilizing the resources that you have at, at available. Um, along with that, grab something. You know, when you play, play your grabber, uh, it pretty much should be the your first action unless you really are concerned about shield busting. Um, and, uh, and grab a used interrupt. At the very least, if you grab a used interrupt, you're making your opponent lose that unit of life force. You can have a mental list of what interrupts are instant grabs, things like leadership and command or barrier, uh, but don't be afraid to just grab stuff that's not on that list. Sometimes you do want to grab Weeza Got a Grand Army. Uh, and then watch out for counterbeats, uh, whether you're, you know, beware of it or looking for the opportunity of it. Uh, Star Wars CCG doesn't have summoning sickness or a second main phase. So when you initiate a battle, you don't get to reinforce before your opponent can come back at you. Sometimes this means you should be deploying to a site and not battling. Other times this means you'll take 10 overflow one turn and set your opponent up to take 15 on yours. Don't concede. Sometimes you're going to lose. Sometimes you can see that loss coming a mile away. That doesn't always mean you should just concede. Forcing yourself to play while you're at a disadvantage will help you with late game resource management. Also, sometimes your opponent gives you an opening you weren't expecting. And finally, play on GEMP. We'll never get to a point where people agree whether playing on GEMP is as good as playing in real life. But that's not really relevant to the issue. It's better than nothing. It's better than playing solitaire on the floor in your bedroom or something like that. You can play on GEMP every day, anytime. Even if you have a miraculous weekly play group where you get three games in every week, one, one game per day on the other six days will triple your reps. That's not even considering the fact people benefit from practicing every day more than they would benefit in the same amount of time once per week. So just, you, you know, GEMP games are, GEMP reps are, are bonus, just, just pure bonus. It's all upside. Um, you know, and that's, that's all I, that's all I got. Hopefully I wasn't too rambly. Hopefully this helps some people until next time. Good luck. Have fun. No reverts. Oh wait, I don't say that part. It's been a while since I did one of these.